This is Robert Picardo, and you're watching The Planetary Post. Hello and welcome back. This month's episode is all about eclipses, except for this first story. Earlier this month, the Juno spacecraft made its closest ever flyby of the great red spot on Jupiter. This giant storm may be 350 years old, but it's the closest view we humans have ever gotten of it. Take a look at some of these spectacular images. Oh, so beautiful. Don't you just kind of want to jump in there? Warning, the Planetary Society does not recommend jumping into Jupiter's great red spot without proper supervision. There is a total solar eclipse that will be sweeping across North America on August 21st. Because of its trajectory, this could be one of the most viewed and scientifically observed eclipses in history. To show you what we've created, here's Junior Ranger Kalisa. The National Park Service and the Planetary Society are teaming up to make sure everyone knows about the 2017 North American Total Solar Eclipse. Together, we created the new Junior Ranger Eclipse Explorer Activity Book. This workbook will get kids out of the house as they learn about the science, history, and fun of solar eclipses. So call your nearest national park and ask if they have the Eclipse Explorer book. Or you can download it from nps.gov kids or at planetary.org eclipse. In addition to those activity books, the boss himself, Bill Nye, has created three new videos about eclipses that are just so much fun. And you can also find them at planetary.org eclipse. And remember to be outside on August 21st looking up with proper eye protection at this spectacular total solar eclipse. The August 21st eclipse will be a natural eclipse, but how about an artificial eclipse? Could technology create one? To find out the answers to these questions, I went to JPL to talk about Starshade. My name is Gary Blackwood, and I am the manager of NASA's Exoplanet Exploration Program, NASA's search for habitable worlds and for life beyond the solar system. Starshade is a, is a study that NASA's conducting for a possible future mission. Yes, NASA studies star shades and other techniques for searching for planets around other stars. Gary, there's a lot of excitement about the upcoming eclipse Definitely. on the 21st of August. Starshade is like an artificial eclipse in a way. Right? Exactly, Bob. Starshade gives us the ability to block out the light, not from our sun, but from another sun and expose a dim planet orbiting that star. Why don't you tell our audience, in case they don't know, what an exoplanet is? An exoplanet is a planet outside of our solar system. Think of planets orbiting other stars. These are the worlds that you travel to on Star Trek Voyager. Yes, I, well, of course. We're talking about real exoplanets. These are real exoplanets. Can you explain to us why it has this shape? Starshade is all about diffraction. Light is, is like a particle and a wave. So when it hits a surface, it actually ripples around the sides and it can come back inside to the telescope. This scalloping, it keeps that from happening. The actual shape of this is a beautiful mathematic expression of the right way to diffract light away from the telescope as opposed to inside. Wow. Can you explain then how we get this big shade all bunched up so that we can launch it in space? We use the power of origami to fold up these incredibly large spacecraft into small spaces so we can fit them inside a rocket for launch. So we fold we it up like that. Origami we, it up. We origami it up. Load it into the rocket. Exactly. Send it into space. And once it gets it. to space, we deploy it. Cool. I wanted to study spacecraft that packaged up really tightly, spacecraft like solar sails or solar arrays. So this is a half-scale model of the inner disk of the starshade, and this is one giant piece of origami. The half-scale model of the center of the starshade is now completely folded up. Now we're going to see it deploy. Can you explain how the shades are wrapped up? for launch? Yeah. yeah, so apart from the origami that we just saw how that stowed up, we have to then wrap 24 petals around the starshade structure. So it's very important that we unfurl these petals perfectly in space and do not touch each other because the petal edges are razor sharp. Our sun is always out there illuminating the 
uh, backside of the starshade. And that sunlight wants to reflect off to the starshade into the telescope. So what we have to make is a very sharp edge so that there's no area for that sunlight to reflect back into the telescope. So if you had a ding in the razor, for example, what would that do? That would be a very bright spot and would look like an exoplanet. When will we see a full scale starshade? Yeah, so by the end of the summer, our interns are gonna assemble 24 petals that we can attach to this full size core right here. So this is the actual size of the core. Full this size. is it. Right, and we'll have 24 six meter long petals that fill this entire room. And the interns are making the petals for the full scale right now. So long from JPL. What fun. To learn even more about Starshade, follow the link in the Planetary Post email. The last thing I want to mention, the White House recently reactivated the National Space Council, an advisory committee that will develop the overall space strategy of the U.S. One of the next steps will include naming a new NASA administrator. So stay tuned to the Planetary Post. As a challenge, would you like to try folding up the starshade? This is the starshade fold pattern. Can fold it up. How hard could it be? All right. That's, That's wonderful, a, Bob. Yeah, I think I could work here. Yeah.